Well, I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the pilgrim way for the hand of God in all my life I see. And the reason of my bliss, yes, the secret all is this, that the Comforter abides with me. He abides, He abides, hallelujah, He abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk that narrow way, for the Comforter abides with me. And once my heart was full of sin, once I had no peace within, till I heard how Jesus died upon the tree. Then I fell down at his feet, and there came a peace so sweet, now the Comforter abides with me. He abides, he abides, hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day, as free, for the Spirit has control, Jesus satisfies my soul, since the Comforter abides with me. He abides, He abides, hallelujah, He abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day. Comforter abides with me, and there's no thirsting for the things of the world. They've taken wings long ago. I gave them up, and instantly, all my night was turned to day, and my burdens rolled away. Now the Comforter abides with me. He abides. with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way, for the Comforter abides with me. He abides, He abides, He abides, hallelujah, He abides with me. Once like a bird in prison I dwell, no freedom from my sorrow I felt. Then Jesus came and listened to me. Glory to God, He set me free. He set me free, yes, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison. Found my Jesus to see. Glory to God, He set me free. Now I am climbing higher each day. Darkness of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground. Glory to God. The bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see. Glory to God, He set me free. So goodbye to sin and things that confound. Not of this world shall turn me. bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see the glory to
God bless you all this evening. Certainly a privilege to be here together. And we've been looking forward to this day for quite some time with some anticipation and planning, and it has arrived, amen. We trust, amen, that we're gonna hear from God tonight because we've come expecting. And the prophet of God told us, you get what you expect, amen. So I hope you came with a big expectation because we wanna receive what we came expecting. Men, we all know and love Brother Abraham. He's been with us many times. He's been coming here since 2015, the first time he came. I didn't realize it had been that long until we were fellowshipping, and he shared that. I've been always thankful for his visit, thankful for his friendship, thankful for the ministry that God's entrusted into him. It's always edified me. I've been built up by the word that's been preached. But I'm also thankful that we have an extra pool here because we have Sister Mercy and Brother Moses Sharibi and Sister Mercy was, uh, Brother Abraham was her guardian when she was young. He raised her as an adopted daughter, amen. And so he's always got to come back and see his new grandchild, amen. So we thank God for that little extra pool that we have in this area. But yeah, Brother Abraham's been a good friend. We really appreciate it. So we want to, we want to turn the pulpit over to him and we want to pull on the gift and receive what God has for us. And we trust that God will meet us. Also, we want to welcome all the visitors. There's several that have traveled in from several different places. We want to say, God bless you. You're very welcome. We're very glad that you're here. Also, if you're remaining for tomorrow, the morning service will be at 1030 in the morning. Uh, we expect Brother Abraham to be ministering again in the morning, but also wanted to let you know that we're having a fellowship dinner immediately after the service over in the fellowship hall, and everybody is welcome to stay and join in, and we'll also be having a communion service tomorrow evening. So we want to make you aware of that. And at this time, we're going to invite our brother Abraham to come and share the word. Brother Blake. So turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for. in the love. 
you once more in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Just happy to be with you. Amen. And to see your face is still shining for the glory of God. Amen. That you still love the Lord. Yes. And he loves you. That is a sure case. Because the Bible says having loved his own, he loved them to the very end. So maybe you may be seated for a few minutes, or I mean a few moments. Uh, bring greetings from Uganda especially from our home church and my family and also from uh, across a few areas, Kenya and Uganda and different churches. You know, very many people love you. They share with you the word. And of course, I appreciate the ministry here. You have been a blessing to very many people around the world. And uh, what shall I say about the ministers here? I got to hear a portion of a sermon preached, I think, last Wednesday by the other brother. It was wonderful. So we appreciate all of you. And um, I know that we are not having much time here. Right. Yes. Keep saying it, but maybe I keep coming. Yes. And you think, because you keep coming, it's still more time. But you see, Paul said the same thing. So I think for us, we are more sure that we are more on the edge of it Amen. than all those who have said the same statements before. Amen. Yes. Amen. So the Bible says, I mean, the prophet, I think, preached and said they died in anticipation. Mm -hmm. And they, they were like about to receive. And Paul didn't even exclude himself when he said, we who shall be alive, I shall be alive. Yes. He counted himself among those whom the rapture should find when he's still alive. So what about us today? <laughs> so I think I must really appreciate all friends who've come. I can see a number of friends who have come from different places. And Brother Dan Ratliff, who just been here, uh, he did a very nice job for me. And I uh, enjoyed that brief one day in his place. You talk about wonderful men of God who uh, exhibit the love of God and the care. He's, he's a very nice brother Amen. and his wife. So uh, I can see, yeah, yeah, a few friends also from other places. It's such a honor to have you. Uh, I was asking Brother Chad, he was saying, well, there are some friends who have come just to attend these meetings. I said, well, I don't know. I think I've preached, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done, I've preached, I've preached myself, finished, kaput now. So, <laughs> I would rather just come and sit and listen here. Amen. But somehow, he will not let me do that. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah, and that's why I got, I think that's why God put him here. And what shall I say about um, the friends where I was in Charlotte, they sent their greetings here. Um, Pastor Shembo Stephen and his church, and of course, have been taken good care of uh, by Brother Chad and his lovely wife, Angie. Uh, I think, yeah, it is my second home here. I always enjoy it. So, much appreciate. So, thank you for your smiles. I can see them before. Uh, so, I think they. They, they, they just give me a good foundation, like you're saying, catch him. So we are not having a problem with you. We are having a problem with the devil. So you, yes. <laughs> you shouldn't have a, a face that is scared. Just relax and be free Amen. in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So uh, I think uh, with those few words, I would just request that we all stand up and have a word of prayer. And maybe you want to be remembered in prayer yes. for whatever reason. Our God is not scared. He's not even tired of you. Amen. Neither is he worried that you are lifting up your hand. He loves it. So just lift up your hand and we pray together. Loving Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this evening, for this wonderful time that you've given us to be in the house of the Lord. 
and Lord, fellowship around your word. Lord, standing in this place and knowing how many sermons have been preached here, the Lord, the standard that you brought here, the word that comes forth. I'm not even worthy, Lord, but I'm praying that God, you'll come down and just add a little brick today in the lives of your children. Deal with them gently, saving them, perfecting them, bringing us, Lord God, to that stature of the measure of the fullness of Christ. For that's why we are here. We are still here because there's something that we, Lord God, have to come to. May you help us tonight. Meet the needs of your children. You know them, each and every one, whatever they have come with. Just anoint your servant as I step completely out of the way and come and bless your people through your word as you break the bread of life, which is yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I'm just going to go to this very common scripture. I think almost every preacher has ever preached about that scripture. And it's very common even on funerals. So I think it should be today's, today should be a funeral for someone. <laughs> Amen. In John chapter 14, I'm just picking some view, few verses. Um, I'm picking verse 1. And then I'll pick verse 7 to 12. St. John chapter 14, verse 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. And when the word let is applied, it means permit not. Allow or not. So it's up to you. Either to permit it, to allow it, or not. So he says, let not your head be troubled. And he's addressing many, but if you realize he doesn't say, let not your hearts. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. So it was very easy, common practice, to believe in God. But now the challenge was, believe in me. Amen. In verse 7 he says, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. <laughs> Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the father. And it suffices us. Jesus says unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet you have not known me, Philip. He that has seen me has seen the Father. Amen. How sayest thou, then show us the Father? Now this is just chapter 14 of John. I think it was just maybe... The longest would have been maybe about two years or one and a half years Jesus has been with the disciples. And he's saying, I've been with you a long time. So how are you, would you think about yourself? How many summons have you had? How many years have you been here? How does Jesus now talk about your time with him? So he says, I've been a long time, so long time with you, and yet you have not known me, Philip. He that has seen, the, uh, seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou, then show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Yes. Believe, that, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. 
I just wanted to read something else in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. And Paul is speaking about his ministry, saying in verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, Amen. according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, Amen. both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him which, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. May God bless his word and bless you. You may be seated. Dispensation. In the dispensation of the fullness of uh, times. He wants to gather. And he uses the word might. So it's not going to apply to everybody. He doesn't say he must gather all things. But that is part of his program. It's part of his plan. Amen. So today I'm talking about from the invisible God to the visible incarnate one. That is moving from the invisible God to the visible incarnate one. Amen. Amen. So I have a subject from that which I'm saying move your business you have faith business to God's new dispensation office. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. He doesn't want your business in the other office. He wants you to move it to the new office. Amen. Amen. It strikes you that Jesus himself is speaking to the disciples. And he's addressing them and he says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. I know you believe in God. But now the challenge is, believe also in me. Amen. Amen. Because that God is no longer that God that you thought of. He has left that office. Amen. Amen. But he had not really got to the understanding. They had not received it. The disciples, the believers, they were with him. They had seen the sign of the Messiah. They had heard him preach. They had seen the demonstration of creative power. And he marched in history. And what was it for? But here they were, they were still trying to hold on to the other office, right. believing the way the other Jews uh -huh. are believing. Right. Right. Yet they are in a new dispensation. Right. This is a dispensation of Christ. Yes. God has become flesh. Amen. And they were here privileged to be with him. Yeah. They were living with him. Walking with him, eating with him, seeing him do like he's telling them, even if it was hard for you to believe me, pass yes. believe me for the works. Amen. The works that you, have, you people are seeing, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the display of the supernatural. Why is it too hard for you to understand that there is a change of office? God is now here. Isaiah 9 has been fulfilled. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Glory be to God. Amen. So the disciples, if you remember my sermon which I preached here when I was here, I was talking about going beyond, you know, you know receiving the mystery. Huh? 
the mysterious reality of the more than a prophet office ministry. You go beyond the office. Amen. So what did Malachi 4 introduce? So that's why those who are stuck at the office of Malachi 4 right. are struggling, yes. are suffering, yes. Yes. are getting darkened. Yes. They are getting weakened. They are confused. Yes. Wow. Because that dispensation is over. Why are you holding on an office of the prophet? He's not even there. He came, preached the message, showed you Christ, identified the reality for you, and said, here he is. Here is your bridegroom. Amen. Now you are still stuck on William Branham, William Branham, William Branham. He said this, he didn't do this. Please. This is not time for that. This is time for the reality that he identified. So Jesus himself is talking to the disciples and he says, you look, you are making yourself get troubled when you stick to the other office. When you remain to the office of the invisible God, the God of Israel, the great Jehovah Almighty God of the Old Testament that related to us through the prophets and we could approach him through sacrifices and offerings and you know these right, rites and these rituals and so forth. We really knew the oracles. We kept the Ten Commandments. We know the Torah. You related to him like that. <laughs> that one is now gone. You will remain troubling yourself. So it is in your power to trouble yourself, to fret yourself, to confuse yourself, or it's in your power to come to me also. Believe, transfer that faith from that office and bring it to me. I am here. I am the answer. I am the reality of that office. You were looking for something real, something tangible. That you can lay a hold on. Yes. That you can touch and feel. Hallelujah. And grace has provided it for you. Yes. And here it is. Yes. You are with it. And you are still looking back. You did good to believe in God. And that was another dispensation. This is a, a, a new one. This dispensation is that God has put on flesh. He's here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I just love the Lord, you know. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I wish I was a good preacher, Brother Chad. <laughs> then I would start preaching now. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Now he says, here in the prophet, the prophet says, God has got a purpose in the message, why cry, speak. He says, God has got a purpose for you being here. See, if you can only be, get to that place, how much trouble you save God and yourself. You save God a lot of trouble and yourself when you come to that place. You come to identify yourself with the reality he wants to bring you to. When you come, when you come to the up, upgraded position, it is a transformation. Don't stay stuck to a place. God is to bring you to something. Friends, we must go home. And we are not going to go home by a God that is in heaven. No, no, no. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yes. But now, that, where is that Father? Where is that God? So I, I, I'm just here to challenge ourselves today a bit. Asking the grace of God if he can help me. You see, he says, if you can get to that place, you, how much trouble you save God and yourself too. So when you don't get to that spot, you give God a lot of trouble. Because you are at an office, that you are crying to. You are disturbing him. And he has given you the solution. The solution is staring you in the face. He's here. But you are stuck there. And you are saying, God, God, help me. God, answer this. God, do this. 
Now the prophet says somewhere where he said, now we pray for the sick. Now we pray for to solve problems. But time is coming that you shall speak. Amen. You shall say. Hallelujah. Now, folks, when shall these things be? Yeah, right now. When are we going to come to that? Every other sign that the Bible speaks about for the end time, preparing us for the rapture, is very clear, is very evident. Every sign you can read of the Bible, what is remaining is for us to come to that. To come to that point where God knows what is in you takes care of you, what is in you takes care of every situation, and you will not need anybody, but he is in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So God is having trouble by people who are supposed to give him no trouble. Oh, just imagine, imagine if all the sermons that we have been hearing all these years, just imagine all the preachings, all the good sermons that we have had, the revelations, the mysteries, the teachings. The expositions. Just imagine if all that became life in you. Just imagine all the quotes that you have had all these years. What if really you concept, I mean you receive them and they become flesh. They become manifested. He says you believe in God, believe also in me. Now, we are coming to something because you see, it's, it was a common ground. And God is wanting us always to go away from the common ground. That's why Brother Branham, well, as long as he was in the first and second polls, that was like common ground, the denomination of the world, and everybody was accepting him. But when he started to break through into the word, the unveiling of the word. And the word is God. In the beginning was the word. The word that created everything. The logos. The pillar of fire coming down. And he says the quickening power came down to open the seals. So the seals broke and the word was unveiled. And the word is that logos. And the logos coming to you. Becoming that same original Spoken in what? Amen. That created the universe and it's here tabernacle in you Amen. and it's there. Praise God. Amen. Just you to come to terms to the fact that it's there. Yes. Yes. That's where the problem is. Yes. Yes. And that's why we are still troubled. Oh troubled with the disease, with the stress, with the this, with the that. <laughs> problem this, problem that. This one hurts me. This one. Who do you think can he hate God and it bothers him? You are still hurt, bothered by being hated because you have not yet realized who you are. You are still abused and it affects you because you have not yet realized who you are. You are still attacked by the devil and you get scared because you have not yet realized who you are. But when you come to know what you have received, believe also in the fatty pool. Amen. Believe also in God in man. Yes, Believe in also that all that was in God, he poured into Christ. Yeah. All that was in Christ, he poured into the church. Amen. Can you believe that? Yes. <laughs> Glory be to God. So it was common practice. And it's always the problem, you know? People will always want common things. Common practice for the Jews to believe in the existence of God, his power, his capability, the omnipotence, this invisible God, Jehovah, whom they would relate, as I said, to through prophets and so forth, and, you know, reciting some Torah, uh, some laws. But when it came to a visible God, It was a taboo, an anathema. 
And was to be resisted by all means. Let's read something here in John chapter 10. In verse 30 he says, A and my father are one. Amen. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. And Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? Right. Now look at this. The Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. <laughs> for blasphemy. And because that thou being a man, you can put there a word mere. Being a mere man, a mere woman. <laughs> you also, a mere man, you are making yourself good. That's where the whole problem was. And that's why in a ministry that is pointing you to that, the devil will rise up. Even when you yourself, you are struggling to come to that, the devil will rise up. The devil doesn't want you to come to that. But I'm not here to give the devil what he wants. Amen. Amen. I'm here to trouble him. The more I trouble him, the less trouble I get. But the less I trouble him, the more I trouble, I, I, I would permit him to trouble me. I rather trouble the devil now. He wants to stone you. Glory be to God. They throw stones. He claims to be this. He claims to be that. I don't claim. I am. <laughs> I am what God says I am. And this is not my statement. This is the word of God. So I am what God says I am. And I believe that I am what he said I am. But the devil doesn't want you to accept that. And as long as you don't accept that, you are the devil's friend somehow. Because you have given him the opportunity to keep troubling you. And you are troubling yourself by giving the devil certificate to trouble you. And Jesus says, don't allow your hearts to be, your heart to be troubled. This way believers who were with Jesus they were seeing the miracles, the power of God displayed, and when Jesus is saying <clears throat> something to do with his office, and then he says, show us your father, and it will suffice us. And Jesus said, have I been as a long time with you, and you don't know me. And, 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 and you, know, you know, many of us have been in this message, we have had good sermons and preached you know, we have seen so many things, and yet we don't know that this message introduced God. Amen. Amen. This message yeah. is Amen. God. Yeah. 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 Amen. Seven seals unveiled Christ. Amen. And that is the mystery that is not for the world. It's not for the denominations. No. It's not for nobody else. No. It's for you. That's why them seven thunders were forbidden to be written. Yeah. He wants to write it himself with the iron pen in the pages of your heart and you get that mystery and it's written there with the iron pen. Yeah. No devil is able to take it out. Hallelujah. And the devil is scared of such people. Yeah. Yes. But we must come to that. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Glory be to God. Amen. They wanted to stone him for one thing. Because he claimed he's the son of God. <laughs> I, I, I really want God to help us to see this. And Paul is talking about the dispensation of the fullness of times. Prophetically, he's talking about the seven church ages. The times, the fullness. And after that, 
After the message to the seven church ages, John is told to come up here. And what happens? John begins to see things that he could not be able to see. By the enabling formula of God, God has connected him, connected him to the theophany, and he's able to see things that he cannot see. That's why he says he was able to look at the book Hallelujah. that no man was supposed to, to look. <laughs> How did you look at it, John? And he saw 24 elders, and he's one of 24 elders. <coughs> so in other words, he saw himself. I'm under the 24. But you have to come up here. Leave this argumentative levels of the seven church ages. And message believers, come up here. Come into the realm where you see things that you couldn't see when you are there. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And even one of the elders told him, John, don't be sorrowful. Who was that one? Him, his only theophany speaking to him. Don't be sorrowful, John. And he saw himself already seated there, already with crown, already worshiping, yet he's still here passing through the Patmos island of troubles and persecution, but he sees himself already seated there. So now, God was giving him a foretaste of what he was going to be, things that are to be. And now here we are. We, our things that are to be, we are going to begin them here. Because you need that power in you, that word in you, before you go home. You are not going to go home by grace. Grace makes the formation of God in you. And God takes over and takes you up, up to glory. Don't just sit there and say, well, if God wants to take me to, he- to, take me to heaven, he will take me. He might gather. So if you are not willing to be gathered, that he might gather all things. He has the intention to gather all things. But some of them might not be gathered. So you just have to ask yourself, do you want to be in the might or must? Hallelujah. The must side of God's program or the mighty side? Blessed be the name of the Lord. But that is his plan. He must gather all things in Christ. And who is Christ? The anointed word. <laughs> so here, we see the disciples themselves had not come to that. They didn't realize. So I think it is not even that you are very, very lazy. Or that you are too much weak. No, it is the nature of human beings. But God is so perseverant. God is still waiting, Amen. bringing us to that. Amen. That's why if you will notice these days, yes. I don't care which preacher stands here, yes. he will point you to that. Amen. There's no other place God is pointing us at yeah. Amen, but the word in you, yes. the life of the word. Yes. Yes. God in you. Amen. So when God is in you, what do you become? When God is in you, and for you, you are dead. Amen. For you, you are dead. Yeah. I am crucified with Christ, even if I am living. It's not me living, it's Christ living. So if it's God in you, and you are dead, who is there? Amen. Amen. Who is there now? Yeah. It's like the opening of the flower. It's beginning to sprout. It's beginning to open slowly. And one of these days you are going to see the full reality of who you are. And God quicken that day. Bring it quickly. Friends, I'm tired. I want to go home. I don't know about you. So he says, here he says, no matter what size the circle is, in another quote here, he says, 
or how many people is gathered together. Christ is omnipresent. And he is the only being that is there that is omnipresent. The devil cannot be omnipresent. God is the only one who is omnipresent. That is everywhere. He fills all heavens and earth. If it, that's exactly what he said in John chapter 3, verse 13. He says, the son of man, he was speaking from the earth, but he was in heaven. <clears throat> yes. So he says, um, here sometime ago on a mount up in California, I was looking at that great observatory where one of the astronomers had been converted in my meetings. And they took me up there. Go to a glass that you can see, you can see 120 million light years, or, or years of light space. <clears throat> light troubles, I think, about 8,000 8, miles per second, whatever. Break that down into miles. And how many miles would you have of 120 million years? How many mi miles would you have in a minute? How many in a, an hour, in a day, a year? Brother Brown, I'm speaking about the universe. A hun in a hundred years or in a million years. And 120 million years, and all beyond that is filled with the solar system. Uh. Our great Jehovah God yes. just blew them off. Yeah. Hallelujah. His fingers yeah. in creation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh. Now I feel religious. Uh. And, and, and you know what? I was preaching somewhere that you are in those fingers. Yeah. Your names are engraved there. Yeah. So when he was blowing these things into creation, Amen. you were there. Amen. You were part of the fingers, yes. blowing them into existence. Amen. And he covers all the space. And sometimes we walk around and act like we, we can run his business. We act like we can run his business. We can't run his business. His business. He has to come in us and run his own business. Amen. Think for himself, talk for himself, yeah. act for himself, yeah. Yeah. achieve for himself, plan for himself. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He says he's so big that he fills all the space, and yet he will become so small that he can come to a poor, lost sinner's heart. Praise God. Amen. That is God. Yes. Yeah. Poor, lost, not saint, most holy, reverend, doctor, so and so. Oh. Amen. Yeah. No wonder we don't have those titles. We don't deserve them. No. He deserves all the titles. Yes. Yes. You are just Mrs. Jesus. Amen. Not this right, reverend, doctor, this venerable. No. Oh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. He comes, he, he, he can become so small that he will come to a poor, lost sinner's heart. That's what makes him great. Yeah. Did you hear that? God is not made great by the greatness that we know. No. He becomes so great Amen. when he comes and Amen. sits in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, I've had the privilege in my life to meet great men, kings. I've been in four palaces praying for kings and monarchs and potentates. And you find great men, they are little in their own sight. It's men that is nothing. Little man that thinks himself big, that tries to make himself big. That's what makes, that's what makes God so big. He humbles himself to come down to save, to heal, and makes him go to me. Amen. Now, he comes here, he says, and how true that it is, how true that is with the church today, We've had great men across the country like Oro Roberts and great gifts has come into all the church. Of course, not forgetting William Marion Branham. Right. Right. <laughs> he didn't mention himself. But he was greater than that. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> because he introduced the greatest. Yes. Amen. And then he says, and Great gifts have come into the church, and the church just sits there and stares. Mm. <laughs> Wake up. Mm. The baptism of the Holy Spirit has struck the nation, and many churches have been filled with the Spirit, and the great revivals have taken place, and the world just sits and stares in space. Mm. When God does anything, He expects the people to look at it and believe Him. Right. Amen. 
not believe in him, but believe him. Yes. Present tense. Amen. 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 I believe in God. That is the Jehovah. I believe in God. He's somewhere there in heaven, some great supernatural being. He wants us to believe him. Miracles, wonders, signs that God does is a little something. They are shaking before the church to wake up the church that he is soon coming. Okay? Now, this applies to the disciples. They were looking at God doing miracles, signs, opening the word, teaching them the mysteries. And they were sitting there and staring. Yet the purpose, why God is doing this? The purpose, why he so mightily displayed himself in Malachi for his ministry Amen. was to wake us up. Yes. Yes. Amen. That this generation has been visited by God and the message that was brought is God. Yes. And that message is now in you. Amen. And then you come to terms to what God has made you to be. Right. Not sit and stare. Yeah. Sit and stare is not going to help you. The devil enjoys it when you sit and stay. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that means whenever God comes down and displays his great power and, and, and omnipotence, he does it to show people something. He expects people to look at it and believe him. Yes. Believe in him, or believe, I mean believe him, and be established in the present tense God Amen. of the present truth. Present truth. Yes. So the present truth of that day in the disciples' age was that God was now with them. But that's not our message today. God is not just with us. God is in us. And the more he comes in, in, in us, yeah. the more we disappear. Amen. Amen. So he becomes bigger, we become nothing. Yes. We begin to diminish until we disappear. Amen. And the final standard, the final level of the church will be that it will be God in the church. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes, Not anything less. Mm -mm. Yeah. And don't settle for anything less. Don't enter into any negotiations with the devil no. for some deal. Some half-baked deal? No. <laughs> the world sits and stares. The church sits and stares. But the bride ponders yes. Yes. over these things. Yes. You remember Joseph never became a Christian? He was a very righteous man, holy. But for him, every time the message about Jesus came, the Bible doesn't say he pondered. It's only Mary who pondered about the things that were being spoken. I'll leave that for your pastor. So he comes here, he says, and, and when the church puts forth another church, it will be a Pentecostal church with the signs of the acts in their apostles doing the same thing with the same Jesus working the same because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. A Pentecostal branch filled with the Holy Ghost, signs and wonders of the resurrection, great things taking place among them. They who know their God in the last days. Amen. They who know their God in the last days shall do exploits. Yes, we are at the end time. Amen. What's the matter with the world? I must close in saying this. What's wrong with the world? Then he picks up that story of the little boy that the mother realized that he could not react to whatever it was. He was playing for him. For him. Ring a bell. No. Right. Clap in the hand. No. Show him sign. No. 
He could only sit and stare. And then he brings down and says, that's what is the matter. A whole lot like the church today. God has took the church in his arms and he has shook. Ah, and all Roberts, a Tommy Osborne, a Tommy Hicks, many other gifts and wonders as he has shook before the eyes of the people. He doesn't call, he doesn't mention himself because he's the one speaking. But we know through the prophet of the day, he shook more. And then he says, and they claim to be religious and they just sit there and stare and act like they don't even pay any attention to it. There is something mentally wrong with the church. Something is wrong. So what if you have a mental problem as a church? You need the mind of Christ to restore your mind, the right mind. Maybe you got some dementia, some amnesia. You've forgotten who you were, forgotten the purpose. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So he says there's something mentally wrong with the church. Something's wrong. God displays the gifts. And they will walk around and say, oh, mental telepathos. Oh, they are just putting on the speaking tongues. There's nothing to it. See, people shouting and praising the Lord with the tears run down their cheeks. Oh, she's just worked up. There's nothing to it. And then he says the church ought to be paying attention to that, a Christian, because it's written in the word. And they did that at the beginning. There's something wrong with the church, something wrong with the people, something wrong with the nation. So he comes down and he says, that's the way the church is getting. God has shook every promise in the Bible before them. Still we just sit and stare. Look at that. Look at what? Show me a sign. Will you? They are looking for signs. The bride must be looking for God. Not just signs. Have God and then the signs will follow. Amen. This sign shall follow them that. Amen. The believers don't follow signs. Don't look for signs. Amen. The signs follow Amen. the believers. Amen. Because they believe the word. They are full of the word. They are full of God. And God produces the signs. And they, those ones who follow signs, follow those ones who are holding gold. Amen. That's why one brother was telling me, brother, tell me the greatest miracle that you have seen in your life. We have had so many. I said the greatest miracle is when God led me to this message. Because this message is the word is God. Signs will fail. Miracles will fail. All these other things will fail. What people have talked about, great testimonies, great experiences will fail. But the word will never fail. And I will have hell. I thank God for the word. So don't even be disappointed even when you are sick. But if you have the word, one of these days that word will take care of whatever problem, I want to tell you that Amen. we have come to that time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm not even excited this day so much praying for the sick. It doesn't excite me. I've seen recently, you know, when I, before I came, they brought some girl who was mad and, you know, given the parents uh, had time and beaten people and screaming and fighting and biting and and she's a mother of two children and they brought her to church i was not at the church there was a mismatch in the, in the time that i gave them so they, they brought her a little bit later and had gone somewhere so i came back in the evening they have been waiting for five hours and the, and the believers uh, they were doing some preparation there was a wedding and you know some of them were scared of the, the muddy woman you know so you rise up and talk words and people would run away and so I came and, you know, I, I knew God was going to deliver her. But I said, God, I'm tired of just praying for the people to be 
healed, to be delivered. So what? So what that they are delivered? So what that they are healed? So many have been healed and they have gone back in the world. Serving the devil. So that sign blinds them. They think God is just too good to set them free so that they go and live. He said, go happy, you know, like, like, you know, that kind of life. I said, Lord, before I pray for this human, I, I, I want to know whether she's going to value salvation. And, and God gave me a sign immediately. And I thank God. So I just took a hold of her. And then I was asking the deacons, why didn't you pray for yourself, pastor, that one is handled by you? I said, no, it's also handled by you. You are believers. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about, not knowing what we have. So I just got a hold of hands, went to the office with her mother, and I said, kneel down. And she, she, and just kneel down, and she knelt down, and then I prayed for her. I said, God, even when she doesn't understand, I want her back in her right mind. Amen. And I want to talk to her about salvation yes. now. Amen. I'm fed up with these people who just come and draw the power, draw the power, and go and live for the devil. I'm not excited because they are healed. You rather die sick and go to heaven than live health and go to hell. So I prayed for her in a moment, like just in the split of time she was delivered and she was saying, where am I? And she was laughing and then I said, now calm down. <laughs> you know that you have been transported over 300 kilometers to be brought here. Because all the preachers in Kampala could not cast out this devil. They took you to a number of churches and they have brought you here. Oh, yeah. Where am I? He said, you are here in Busu. You are not in Kampala. So I, I said, now, do you know why those preachers could not cast out those demons? And then I say, I remember that statement, the prophet says, God is emptying himself from the whole world and pouring himself into his bride. Denominations are finished. Right, empty. Even what they are doing, they just masquerade. They, they even train the people to act like they were sick and they were healed. Right. They are doing things in tricks just to deceive the people. Empty. They are dying. They are finished. Right. Yes. Amen. True revival is now around the word Amen. because the word is Amen. going to form itself into the fullness of God. Yes. And God will take care of every problem. Yes. And I want to promise you, you are not going to be sick when we go home. God. No. Amen. That tabernacle, this body, a body has thou given me. Hallelujah. I didn't come looking for sacrifice for this, for that, but a body has thou prepared for me. Amen. And you are that body. Hallelujah. Amen. So I talked to this girl about Jesus and she knelt down with the tears. Say, I accept the Lord. Pastor, I'm even ready for baptism. I said, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm not excited just because people are healed. I'm not even excited when the lambs, the, the lambs walk. I had, I thank God, the other lame man I talked about, I prayed for, he has been out of the church 15 years. He just came back in his February to repent. So brother, sister, thank God yes. if you catch the revelation of this. You have got the greatest blessing. Yes. You are the, in the most comfortable position. Hallelujah. When you receive this word yes. and when you cherish it, when you value it, yes. Yes. when it becomes your life, yes. because it will become your power, your glory, your future, yes. your everything. Yes. Without this, you are lost. Completely nothing. Amen. But we thank God he came our way. We thank God we know where we are standing. Yeah. We are not going to sit there and stare. No way. No way. 
Don't sit and stare. Like the disciples they say, we believe in God. Well, God has sent a prophet. And they were looking at Jesus. They didn't know who. <laughs> well, God <laughs> has sent us a great man. <laughs> God has sent us a great man, a great prophet. The Messiah is here. Who is the Messiah? And what is the message of Malachi for? Whom did he introduce? That's it, bro. Are you ready to leave the other office of God with us? God is with us in our church. Our pastor is a good preacher. We hear good testimonies in the church. <coughs> They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Not others' testimony. No. Their, yeah. your, your testimony. Your yeah. testimony. And what is your testimony? The testimony of Jesus Christ yeah. is the spirit of prophecy. Yeah. So your testimony is that you are dead yeah. and Jesus lives in you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not your testimony, but see, as a human being. Amen. You are dead, he lives. So that's when you qualify to prophesy again. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. <clears throat> so he says, and after Jesus had so proven his messianic Sign that it was that Messiah. Yet in the face of all that, the saying, show us the sign. When you say, show me a sign, you are a non-believer. Because actually, you are supposed to become the sign because you show, before, before you show signs. You are not supposed to see signs, but you are supposed to show signs. And before you show signs, you are supposed to be the sign. The super sign. What is the super sign? God in a man. So, struggle to become the super sign. And then you will become the sign to those who want signs. But for you, you want the super sign manifested. And that's where your comfort zone is. Not just because you're fit, you can jump up and make push, push, press ups. You have good biceps and you can do this, you can lift this. Business is running very well. Well, well, I last time before the people I can articulate what is very well. I'm a good orator, blah, blah. Not that. The sign is not even holding a message book, it's not even holding the Bible. The sign is when the Bible becomes life in you. Yeah. When you become the message manifested. Yeah. And that's what the devil doesn't want us to come to. But praise God, there's going to be a people come to that. And I want to be one of them. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. You believe in God. You believe in Jesus who was with us. Believe now in Jesus. Who is in us? Amen. 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 You believe in pray, being prayed for. Believe also in praying. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Before, <laughs> you, you, you say believe also in praying. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who is going to do a religion for you in your house? Who will pray for you before you sleep? Who will pray for you before you eat? Who will pray for you in the morning? Who will pray for you? I was preaching somewhere. I think when I was there somewhere, I was talking about how we want everything to be done for us. 
the pastor has to study the message for us, study the Bible for us. And for you, you don't study the message, you don't study the Bible. The pastor has to do everything and every small question. Pastor, can you answer me this? I have this question. What about this? What about seven church ages? What did the prophet say this? What about this church order? What about, what do you do? Who is going to do a religion for you? Hey. Lord be to God. Amen. I don't know why you love this brother Mayra. He's not a good brother. <laughs> good preacher, brother. He's not a very good brother, but he loves you. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes. Something in you must be watered, must be nurtured, must be growing. You must see it grow. You must feed it. You must seek more of it. You must expand it. It is your life. It's your future. It's your everything. God has given a seed. It's there. Take it where there is water. Take it where they can help it. Where it can be energized. Where it can gain strength. Okay. That's why you find people, you know, they are working there. They are there in the offices. They do three jobs a day and run here and there. And then they can't come to church. And then they come to ask the question which was answered last Wednesday night. Who is going to do a religion for you? Who is going to study the Bible for you? You are asking a silly question. Uh Uh-huh. And you are a very mature person. How do you tell me, hey, what about this, this quest, the scripture that says women should not cut hair? Should that be a question you ask me? <laughs> hey. God expects you not to sit and Sounds good. <laughs> Makes some sense. God expects you to be active. That's why he says you already got the faith when you received the Holy Ghost. But now you, know, you don't know how to operate. To act upon that. Who is going to act upon it for you? Who is going to go in rapture on your behalf? Who is going to be changed on your behalf? Who is going to be changed for you? You need it to go there yourself. Yeah. And that's why you people should begin to speak to God. When you speak to God and you, must, you perfect in prayer, then you are no longer going to pray, you are going to begin to speak. That's the final standard. We are not going to pray. We are going to speak. But before we come to that level of just speaking the word, you shall say to this mountain, not pray. Like Brother Branham, when he spoke the squirrels into existence, he didn't pray. It was the stage of say. But before he could say, how many times did Brother Branham fast? Go to the woods and pray and wait upon the Lord. Pray and fast and for faith meals. It didn't come just just that easy. Sit and stare. Let me bring this also here. Maybe you put on your listening shoes. When you come to church, someone open, opens the prayer for you. Praise. Good. Praise for you when they are going to preach the word. Good. They pray for prayer requests. Good. The preacher prays and preaches. Good. After preaching, he prays. Good. When do you pray? And this is the house of prayer. And then you go back home and you give the pastor a call. Pastor, pray for me. I'm having a headache. I have a problem. This this problem has come. This problem has come. Can't you pray? 
Does God have grandchildren? Does God have babies? All of us are children, isn't it? And he gives ear to all of us. So what is happening? Sit and stare. That's not very good preaching. Amen. <laughs> but there is a problem. There is a complacency. Yes. There is a weakness. Yes. There is a resignation. Resigning to fate. Right. Sitting there and giving yourself over to circumstances. God knows. He knows you are capable of doing something. Something should be ringing in your heart now telling you that it's about to go home. It's about time we are going home. It's time to graduate from prayer to the spoken word. But you are not going to graduate unless you qualify, unless you pass the examination. Pass this first. So if you can't even pray, how will you speak? And yet you are supposed to come to that. Because in the beginning was the word. What was the word? Let there be. The logos. So the logos is getting formed in you. So how are you going to come to that? To say let there be. When you can't even pray, why did Jesus pray? Uh huh. Although he was a son, yet learned he obedience by the things he suffered. And he was setting an example for you. Otherwise, how could God pray? Go to the mountain and pray and wait upon God? God waiting upon God? Yay. God waiting upon who? God praying to who? <laughs> and then from there you will come and say, no man should eat on you anymore. Amen. No fruit. And the tree dries. He didn't need to pray. Because he has qualified. He has finished that. He has passed. He has graduated. Do you know that's the reason the devil fights prayer? Oh, you can say amen to the word. You can maybe study the Bible, but you go to prayer. Oh, no, 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 no. Where are those family altars, brothers? Who prays in your home? Who prays for your children? Who prays for your wife? Who prays for your husband? Who prays for you? Is there that uh, heavenly atmosphere in your home? Amen. Because how are you going to rule out that rapture will take place when you're in your house? Right. And yet there must be that heavenly atmosphere. Yes. Because God is there. Amen. Let's wake out. Wake up out of this sleep, this slumber, this complacency, this look, look, I was preaching somewhere and I was talking about how that God spews you out of his mouth because you are lukewarm. Otherwise, you are supposed to be permanently in the mouth of God. And you're a, a, a fiery believer, red hot Christian. You remain in the mouth of God. But when you are lukewarm, weak, weak, uh, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. And when God spews you out, you lose the anointing to do. Because you are both the mouth, in the mouth, you are both in the hand. And the hand fulfills, the mouth speaks. God speaks with the mouth, fulfills with the hand. So how is the hand going to fulfill? When the connection to the intelligence that controls the hand to fulfill it, you have lost it. Spewed out. You are confused. You don't know where your bearing is. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Glory be to God. Amen. So time to graduate yes. Amen. from a church member, 
from a good believer, Amen. from a good Christian, Amen. to God in flesh. Amen. Time to graduate yeah. from a prayer life yeah. to the spoken word. Yeah. But before you come to the spoken word, yeah. you are not just going to jump the queue no. or come there. It is going to be a graduation, a process. Amen. And that's why the devil is making us so weak. You can't even pray five minutes. But you can be on the phone for hours. You can listen to the news for hours. You can be on social media for hours. You, you have friends here, friends here on TikTok and WhatsApp and this and Facebook and so this and that. And all the time the message is ting and you're looking, ting and you're looking, ting. What about the heaven thing? Do you have your connection with God? Is that God forming in you until you feel him so real? And is that the relationship between you? You know, you know when you are just getting married and that intimate closeness and friendship and relationship and warmth of love, that hot love, is that there in your life between you and him? Because the bridegroom has come in you and is residing in you and you are the bride. Mm. Amen. Because it is that love that will take you home. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. Without perfect love, you will not enter there. Amen. Now, whose love? Not yours. Because you don't have a perfect love. Right. It is His. Amen. It is Him. Amen. And you have to begin to realize it, to feel it, to experience it. Until you can even love your enemies. When you no longer even look at them as a, anything dangerous, because they actually are promoters. We thank God for our enemies. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> blessed be the name of the Lord. But brother Abraham, today you are preaching something. How how can you say thank God for my enemies? Thank God for your enemies. Do you know why he has not taken away the devil yet? We should thank God for the devil. <laughs> because without the devil you wouldn't be saved you wouldn't be here you wouldn't even have that power he has given you that power because of the devil you know if you want to see the, the, the weapons of America you don't find them in Lima you find they are, them where the enemy is they bring them here for what? But now you see all the weapons of God's warfare in his armory are here because the enemy is here. Amen. Hmm? Do you know why the Bible says, you, 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 you know, he, he'll prepare a table for you before you are enemies. And, and he wants you to enjoy the food when the enemy is looking out. <laughs> He will not take them away. He will keep them. He will protect them. He will heal them. He wants them to be healthy. <laughs> to live. <laughs> because they are your promoters. When you are sick, they are the ones who challenge God on your behalf. Let's see his God. He says he believes. This time we see he's going to die. And then God says, okay. So they are your promoters. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Do you know why Joshua, when he made that angel, he said, are you for us or for our enemies? The angel said, nay. Neither. <laughs> and that was God himself. Say, so, yeah, I'm even for your enemies, Joshua. I have to give them breath of life. They have to be there so that you become a conqueror. How can you conquer when there is no enemy? How can you defeat the enemy when there is enemy, no enemy? How can you be an overcomer? Qualify to sit with me in my throne when there is nothing to overcome? <laughs> so he makes sure you are always surrounded with enemies. And that is his good plan. And you wonder why they hate you. They are always there.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay. So it's about time that they, we, the true believers in the end time, <coughs> recognize, recognize and started acting on the spa sign that God has given us. The sign that proves that God's dispensation office has changed. This is the reality that we must embrace if we are to amount to anything. And he comes here in the message. I think I will just finish quickly today. He says, all the things that we could speak of for hours, the expressions of God to human race, all these have their part. They play it well. Every flower, every tree, every sunrise, every sunset, everything plays it. It's part well. But all of those expressions of God making known to us and giving us an example and that he was going to make a great expression someday, an internal expression. Then he sent us his express image in the form of his son. God sent his son in the express image of himself to declare to the human race what he thought of us. So we, when you see the image of Christ, yeah. that's what he thought of you. Amen. Amen. He changed his caste. He became man. He became one of us. Amen. From God, the eternal father, from the great creator who, before there was a world filled all the time, space, there was not even a meter or a light meter, neither was there any atom or a molecule. He was still God. And he will always be God. And then he comes down and says, mm, let me leave this. He says, and then when, and then he was so mindful enough to make an expression to us, knowing that he's so great, yet he, he come down in the form of a human being to express what he was. He become a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, lived a, a, a human life. He had no place to lay his head. He was expressing what it, what God was. Amen. In other words, that is the final image of God. Amen. Yeah. The prophet talks about the corporal image, the corporal, corporal body of Jesus there, seated. And you are going to have a, a body changed. And who is God? Who is Jesus? God, isn't it? <laughs> I was one time asking the church. I said, he says, he that overcometh will I grant that he sits with me, even as I overcame and have sat with my father in my throne. So, were they sharing the throne? Huh? A big wide throne and here the father sits and the son sits. And then he says, when you overcome, you'll also be granted the opportunity to come and sit with me in my throne like I overcame and I'm sat with my father. So are we going to be three? No. And it is there? No. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says, God was the head of the, the son. Christ is the head of the church. Amen. And God was the head of Christ. As Christ is the head of the church. Yes. Now, when Christ has sat, he was the body and the father was the head. And when you sit, you are the body and Christ is the head. Amen. One throne. Yes. I saw one yes. sat on the throne. Amen. That's it, right there. Huh? <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. One body. One head. <laughs> one body. Amen. So now that is God's final expression of what He wants to be yes. in a human body. Yes, human looking body. Amen. Look at how God treasured you. Not look like an angel, but look like you. The final, yet he created you in his image, but not the physical. He created you in his image, in the spiritual. But now he creates himself in your image, in the physical. Amen. 
Oh, that you can really be husband and wife. Same material. Bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. Look at that. And then he chose of all the trillions and trillions of stars and planets. He chose here on earth. This is where his blood dropped. And this is the only star that he redeemed. All other stars will collapse. And the Bible says all the stars were collapsing from the firmament, falling. But this one will not collapse. Think about how he thought about you. The final expression of his appearance. Like a man. But before he becomes a man, which he was, he had to purchase you being restored back to his image. Amen. 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 Hmm. I wish I was Brother Chad. Come and take over, Brother Chad. And bring this out clearly. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> He was expressing what? What God was. You see? He laid a plan down for us all that where we could do, could look at this small expression and see God. This is small expression of your small, tiny, short body that may not be very, may, very beautiful. Yes. Yes. Maybe you are not even handsome. Right. Don't care about handsomeness or Leg sameness or shoulder sameness. Yes. Whether you are head some or hand some, it doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> Whether you are just 50 pounds or 100 or 200, no problem. Amen. Amen. He makes sure he fits. Yeah. And that's why when he, he brought the final mystery yes. of our inheritance, the yes. title deed book, yeah. he brought it in the form of a little compressed smaller book. And a little book in the angel's hand, he said, go and take it and eat it. So it is eatable by you. It disappears in you. Final destination. The devil will never get a hold of it again. It's now in you, swallowed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You could look at this small expression and see God. And then we could look up and see God's great expression and have the assurance. So we look at how he can condescend and become too little and yet we see him as a very great, awesome God. And we have assurance. And you walk with your shoulders high. And you have your face muffles. Mm. Who is going to scare you? Mm. Satan, whom do you think you are? Oh. Lord, oh Amen. God. Amen. Oh, Amen. if I, I was in my father when we chased you from heaven, Amen. I'm going to defeat you here. Yes. Yes. I am not an amateur in this. Amen. I am in my mind, right. but not in his mind that he has now put in me. Amen. I know better now. Amen. I know where I came from, where I'm standing, Amen. and what I'm holding on. And when we come to that, the devil begins to tremble now. Final expression. Hmm. God in a man. Final standard. Against the devil. Hallelujah. It says, God, it was a paradox how God could become man and die. That was a paradox. How that a great God that filled all the space and all eternity could come down and be man in order to die to save human. His own creation. How God became one of his own creations to save because he created his own body. He created his own body. Yes. Jehovah the Father dwelt in fullness in Jesus Christ his son. Jesus was the body of God. Yes. God was represented in the tabernacle, yes. the flesh of Jesus Christ. And how that that one that fill all space and all eternity become one man. Amen. Become one man. 
You see what I mean? I'm finishing, friends. <laughs> he comes here. He says, now, I think it's in the message. The word became flesh in the end trip. He says, now, if that same spirit that said, let there be light, and there was light. And that said, let there be trees. And there was trees. And if that same mind that was in Christ being in you, how much could it say, let there be no cancer? Amen. Amen. Is it hard to be spoken? If you know yes. that it is Solid, it's real, it's tangible, it's yes. here. Yes. And he leads you to say, let there be no pain here. Amen. Let there be no cancer here. Praise let God. there be no this, no that. Same logos yes. that spoke yes. and things were created. Amen. The beginning of the creation of Christ, I mean the creation of God, Jesus. It's the beginning of the creation. It's now the, com the completion of the creation. Amen. The omega yes. again. Amen. Amen. He says, he could say, let there be no cancer and it would be gone. Let the blind eyes be opened and they would be so. See, it is your fault. But wait a minute. He said, have faith in God. For very, very, you see, you must have faith in God. And who is God? The Word. And where is the Word? Here. Amen. Time is coming. You are going to have faith in you. Yes. Because you are God. Amen. So now have faith in this yeah. one here. Yes. Not in you worshipping yourself and trusting yourself. And, but being the tabernacle of the God here. Amen. <laughs> if you say, if you shall say to this mountain, be moved and blacked up and cast in the suit, and don't doubt it in your heart, you are not God. You are hurt. But believe what you shall say, it will come to pass. You will have whatever thou sayest. Is that right? You shall have it. Now the prophet says, not me having it. That is not Christ. You. You shall have it. What power, see what power he has given to the church. But if it becomes a real revelation of God that you see it before it happened and express it in word form. Now the real revelation of God where we are going now is that before you speak the word, you see it. You already see yourself healed. Amen. You already see yourself off the wheelchair walking. Yes. Yes. You already see yourself strong and that the tumor gone. You already see yourself delivered. Amen. And then you say, let there be a deliverance. Praise God. Amen. Hmm. This is wonderful, friends. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That you see it before it happens and express it in word form. And that word takes a hold and becomes material. Amen. 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 Becomes tangible. Yes. Becomes material. Yes. Materializes into reality. Amen. Amen. A thought expressed. Oh my, how God. See, your heart and your mind is so and filled with God's spirit. Until your thoughts become his thoughts. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There you are. When your mind and you are leading and you are guiding becomes a direct place or a direct expression of the Holy Spirit that is moving your mortal being. Amen. Oh my. What kind of people we should be? Amen. Amen. That is a question you should answer. Yes. If the very Holy Spirit has so embodied 
or empowered that you don't use your own thoughts. You don't use your own mind. Remember, this is cancer. Remember, this is leukemia. Remember, this is asthma. Remember, if you don't use your own mind, remember the doctor said this. We are superior than the doctor. That man in you, that, that man whom you are dying to give room, that God, is the one who created the doctor. So come on. Go beyond that. Leave that office. Come here. You have forgotten who you are. Don't talk the language of the Jews. <laughs> talk the language of the believer. The language of the bride. The language of God. <laughs> he says, what kind of church should we be? Mm -hmm. He says, you don't use your own thoughts. You don't use your own mind. You don't use your own opinions. But the Holy Spirit has you so built until your thoughts and your being is, is God's spirit expressing itself through you. What kind of a church would we be? What kind of people would it be this morning, maybe this evening, if this Branham Tabernacle, let us call it BCF, this evening was so filled with the presence of God? Why? When you don't even use your own mind, didn't even use your thoughts, didn't even have no, you, I don't know, ultimately, ultimately, I don't know this, of your own, but just to be led by the Spirit. Amen. Friends, time is coming. You will not even need anybody to lay hands on yes. you. Yes. Who laid the hands on Jesus? Mm. Praise God. Amen. You are going to start creating your own healing where you are seated. Amen. Your own deliverance, your own victory, your own strength, transformation. Amen. Graduate now from prayer. At least you do the prayer examination and pass. Because you are not going to come here until you graduate here. But this is where we are coming to. Amen. And this is my focus. Yes. Amen. No, I'm not just going to be happy praying for the people. Mm. I don't care whether I'm praying for who, how many and they are getting healed. Right. That is not graduation. That is not promotion. That is retardation. I want to come to a point where people will be delivered as we preach the word. Amen. People are just walking up, throwing away their crutches because it is there. They are speaking it. It's there. They are, they are having God. The reality is here. I am getting tired. People ringing you everywhere. Come here, brother. I want to pray you. Pray for me. Prayer request this. Pray for me on the phone. Pray for this. Pray for you. Pray for God. <laughs> Time is going to come when you all become gods. Who will pray for God? Amen. Amen. God it doesn't need prayers now. God speaks the word. Amen. Well, this is the new doctrine. No, this is what we are reading. This is the message now. That's the reality this message brings us to. Hallelujah. And whether the devil wants or not, we are going to get there. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Maybe your pastor should just help you put yourself right and then everything begins to work. Yeah, the dynamics. You just put, the, the, the car had some problem. Maybe the wire was cut here and then we put it right and then put the key and start the car go. I don't have to drive the car for you. Oh, let's put it right. <laughs> Glory to God. And he says, and they are the sons of God led by the Spirit of God. And when the human element goes out, when the human element goes out, the human feeling, the human reasoning, opinion, feelings, the way I see it. Oh, I felt this. I felt this. It's behind this. When the human element, the American element, 
the intellectual element goes out replaced by the supernatural element. Glory! So when the human element goes out and the Spirit of God fills the vacancy, that vacancy, I'm reading for you the prophet, the human element goes out and then the Spirit of God fills that vacancy. So in other words, create a vacancy. God God doesn't want to come and struggle to enter. God is not a gate crusher. He's not a housebreaker. He's a gentleman. He waits at the door. Not only should there be a vacancy in your heart, but there should be an invitation. Come in, Lord. Come and have your way. Take over, Lord. I'm tired with this useless, stupid head of mine making rounds of foolishness. Reasoning this, arguing this, knowing this, knowing nothing. Tomorrow it will be a bunch of rotten. I want you. So that even when I was to sleep, I will have the earnest of resurrection. I, I will have the assurance. So when I see, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Yes. I have a foretaste. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Amen. Test it here. Yes. 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 So the Spirit of God fills that vacancy where you empty yourself, amen. Then will be then when the church in its power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ walks in his steps, in his power, in his thoughts, in his being, in his moving. You see what I mean? Congregation says amen. I don't know about BCF. Then your thoughts become words, and the words become material. Amen. Amen. Ha! Words become material. That's when the church is in its power. Listen what the powerful concludes. I believe it's on its road. That's what I'm believing too. Amen. It's coming. Amen. I can feel it. I can Amen. smell it. Amen. We are going somewhere. No wonder you've been yearning for something, isn't it? Right. You feel like you have not made it. You feel like something is there. You, you want to get somewhere. Yes. 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 And you're always telling the devil, there's something I must get to. Yes. Now we begin to see it. Amen. It's on the road. Amen. That when a church will be so wrapped in Christ, Hallelujah. so wrapped <laughs> in Christ, hmm, mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit, Mankind is so away from their selves. Hey. So away from them, their selves that they don't see themselves. Amen. Eh? Amen. You don't see yourself. Mm-mm. Yes, that's the word. Amen. So away from yourself that you don't see yourself. Yes. Right. You see God, you see Christ, Amen. you see the word. Yes. And what you see speaks to you, you hear it, you believe it, you are that. Amen. Hmm. They don't have no, and then, but to serve God. And their thoughts, and then move on. They refuse the things of the world. They just move in the spirit, live in the spirit, move in the spirit, walk in the spirit. So fulfill the love of Christ. Then the love of Christ in the human heart, moving in the Holy Ghost. That great wonderful church will, co- will go forth with power and deity because deity will be revealed in human beings yes. by the Holy Spirit, bringing it to pass, Amen. bringing it to pass the thought of their mind. Praise God. Amen. That is the office. You believe in Christ. Who is Christ? You believe in Jesus. Hasn't he saved you? That is when it's done. Now come here. Right. Right. What is the final office? God in you. Amen. 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 So when you believe God in you, 
you will be so away from yourself, so away from your mind, because you will be dead. It will not even be your mind. Think about that when it's not even your mind anymore. Even your opinions, your feelings, nothing is, is working. That's, it's, not, it's there, but it's ineffective, paralyzed. You see, when you have a hand which you cannot do anything, <laughs> overtaken, overwhelmed, subdued. Then he comes down and in the message conference with God. He says, what are we? His mouthpiece. We submit ourselves to him and our words are not our words. Take no thought what you shall say because it's not you that speaks. It's the father that dwells in you. Amen. He speaks. Yes. Deity. Amen. So that same father that the disciples said, show us your father. <laughs> now the prophet is telling yeah. us that that father now dwells in you. Amen. You don't have to say, oh, show me the Father. Father, show me, show me. Uh, uh, show you what? Amen. What do you want him to show you? <laughs> Glory be to God. God is purpose. We find it here in sending the Holy Spirit. Was one purpose that God himself might dwell in his church and continue his plans through the church. Continue his plans through the church. That is the purpose. That God was in Christ, continuing his plans through Christ, out of Christ, into the church, continuing his work through the church. Amen. So he came out of Christ. Eh? This is the prophet speaking, not me. Amen. Let me repeat that. Yes. That God was in Christ, continuing his plans through Christ, out of Christ into the church. Amen. Amen. Because Christ is the one now in the church. Amen. The anointed one. Amen. So that office, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Christ. empty. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Oh, where is he? He's in the church. He's in you. Yes. And you are looking for him at an empty office. <laughs> Dispensational change. Mm. Amen. You believe in the Christ. Believe also in this one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the final stage. Yes. Yes. This is where he is. Yes. He's here. Yes. Not here. Uh -oh. Here. Amen. So when the devil troubles, he doesn't trouble your mind. He troubles your heart. When he's no longer there, he's not yet there, you will get troubled. Right. Then you are looking there. You are looking for a solution from a wrong source. Right. Amen. No wonder. When Titus, the Roman general, came and the Jews gathered in the temple, they thought God was going to protect them because they are in the temple. They didn't know that the dispensation of God protecting a temple had gone. That's why the veil of the temple was rent. Yeah. And them high priests knew yeah. this thing is now a bogus thing. Yeah. From the day we crucified that man, this yeah. is a bogus thing. Because we saw how the veil that separated the Holy of Holies from the common view tear. Yeah. So they could whisper to one another, mm. we are here but we know we are nothing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Bogus. Who tore that veil? Where was God? We cannot say it's lightning. We cannot say it's the no. devil. Can the devil come and tear the no. holy veil? No. It must be God himself. Amen. So that means God is no longer here. Yeah. They knew. Yeah. That's why even the denominations. One man, one woman preacher came to me and said, Pastor Mayer, I want to tell you something. I said, mm-hmm. Say, the day you prayed for that blind woman and she saw, and we... We started coming and peeping and seeing. He says, we have told one another, all denominations now know that God just passes by our churches, but he stays with you. 
They know. They do. Yes. Nicodemus confessed. Yes. No man can do these things without. Amen. We know. We know. Yes. They knew they were empty. Yeah. So these nominations are just masquerading. No wonder they are swallowing every Tommy wrote. Empty. They are supporting any perversion. They have nothing. They lose nothing. They miss nothing. They have no relationship with God. No. No. Amen. So he left the nominations. Yeah. Now he left the office of Heavenly Father. Yeah. He left the office of Christ. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> now he's in the word incarnate. Word incarnate. Yes. That's where he is. Yes. And where is that office? In you. Yes, exactly. If he's not yet in you, younger man, uh-huh. younger woman, brother, sister here, uh-huh. pray to him tonight. Yes, Amen. Because this is the season. Yes, Amen. That God was in Christ, continuing his plans through Christ, then out of Christ into the church, continuing his work through the church. And now we know what the Holy Spirit is. We found out last night that it is God. Then he comes down here. May I say it like this. All that God was, he poured into Christ. Because he emptied himself and poured it into Christ. So he left that office. Praise God. Amen. And Christ was the fullness of God he had bodily. And all that Jehovah was, he poured into Christ. Yeah. All that Christ was, he poured into the church. Amen. Not into one individual, some great superno one, some great messiah, no. some great grand brother somewhere in Africa, no. America, where, Europe. Some great man we are looking for. There is a brother in South America. There is no. a brother in Nigeria. There is a brother in Uganda. There is a brother in South Africa. There is a brother in this. No sense. Amen. The devil's tummy road served you, served to you on a silver plate. Mm-hmm. Not into one individual, but into the entire body. Entire body of Christ. There, where we come together in unity, we have power. Unit of faith. The essence of the third pool. The unit of faith. All that God was, was in Christ. All that was, that Christ was, is in you. Amen. Now listen. For God was made flesh and dwelt among us. First Timothy 3.16 if you are putting it down without controversy, great is the mystery of Godliness, for God was manifest in the flesh, and we handle him. Amen. Handle him. Yes. He's a God that is handleable, if that is English. Amen. Hey, that was what he was in the Alpha. That's what he is in the Omega. Handleable, feelable. Embraceable. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. For God was manifested in the flesh, and we handled him. God, Jehovah, made flesh and walked on earth, and we saw him with our eyes. Amen. That's where I'm ending. Amen. So, why are we wasting our time on the office? Oh God, oh God. Who are you talking to? Whom have you been receiving? You believe in that God? Thank you. That's what you used to believe. But now believe also in me. Believe also in he that is in you. That's where he is now. May God bless you. Let's stand up. You want to be remembered in our prayer? We are going to pray. We are still graduating in prayer. Can you lift up your hand and we pray? Lord Jesus, 
We want to thank you for this evening. We want to thank you for such plain message that you gave us through your prophet. That made the Bible so real, so clear. And what shall we say, oh God, that we are the blessed recipients of such a message, unimatched, unequal in history. Because you were to do a greater work in this completion of times when you gather all things in Christ and Christ is the incarnate word that is anointed for the final showdown to quicken every sleeping saint and for resurrection, to transform the bodies of those who are waiting, who will be alive. That reality to be in us now. God help us to accept it, to believe it, to receive it, to become it, to experience it, to have it grow, to outgrow us until we be so far from our own selves, from our opinions, our feelings, our thinking, that it will be the thought of God in us, thinking his own plans, continuing his own plan until he executes the end of faith when it is the faith of God, God in us believing his own word until the end of that faith will come when we are translated into glory. Lord, help us. Forgive our shortcomings. Forgive for always being stuck at offices that you have indicated clearly, pointed out that you have left. Like the children of Israel were stoning you, the very God who created them, for just making a statement that you and your father won. And it had eaten up the very believers who thought they had left the denominational world who thought they were out of the echelons of, 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 of the denominations that were the Sanhedrin, they were still asking you to show them your father. They were blinded to what was before them. God with them became a problem for them to accept. What about us? That now it is God in us. God in me. Oh God, help us, Father. In the name of Jesus, help your children around the world to receive this as the final reality. The final office that you are going to operate from. Where the ministers could no longer stand to minister because the glory of God has filled the temples. Now is the time for the glory of God to fill the temples. And the fivefold ministry will be preaching itself out of the pulpit Amen. because perfection is set in and we shall be flying home. Lord, may you help us to recognize the power potentials of what lay in us and begin, Lord God, to seek if we are to pray. Let help us to pray until we perfect in prayer and go to the spoken word. For it is the age of the spoken word. The age of the logos again. Like it was in the beginning, Amen. it would, has to be in the end. Yes. Amen. Lord, come down and take over. Take over every yes. ministry. Help us who stand on the pulpits. Where are we pointing your children? Lord, give us the grace that we shall appoint them to nothing but to you. To the right office of the hour. Christ in us, the seal of the hope of glory. Bless the saints gathered here and the saints around the world, whoever may be tuned in, streaming. Whatever, Lord God, is here, the ministers, the pastor here, Lord, and all your daughters and sons, will you not come down and honor your word and vindicate your word and let them demons fly out of their lives? Those who are sick and afflicted and tormented, those who have been, Lord God, oppressed by the enemy, I rebuke those demons in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say let there be healing. Let there be deliverance. Let there be victory, transformation, breakthrough. Let there be peace and tranquility. Let there be harmony in the families, a revival in the lives of your children. Visit the weak, revive them up. 
Lord, open our eyes to this reality that is Lord God unveiled before us. I just thank you, Father, for this day. I thank you for the work that you've already done. I commit all your children to your hands. Have your way with us. Because I know predestination is a guarantee that none of the elected will be lost. Oh God, help us that we should not just take it for granted, but be sure we are in the right place, in the right standard, with the right person in our lives. And we are just mere things, mere temples holding the reality, the creator, the logos, the one who created. Until God in us will be felt, will be touched, will be embraced, will produce the signs that others who want to see signs will follow. But may we become that super sign. Grant the Father. I commit all your children into your hands. I thank you because I know you've already answered. I look at myself already delivered. I look at your children and see them already healed, delivered, transformed, filled, revived. Perform it, Father. May we see the vision now as we pray of what you've already made us to be. Grant the Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Chad. You see the musicians. We give all the glory to Jesus and tell of his love. We'll tell of his love. Give the glory to Jesus and tell of his wonderful love. We'll give the glory to Jesus. preaching does me a load of good not just because it identifies who I am but it also shows me where I'm lacking and encourages me to keep pressing forward amen not just telling us what God's plan is for us that's wonderful that's exciting but also unveiling where we need to keep moving up higher that's good preaching to me and I needed it tonight did you need it amen Praise God, we love you. It's been so good to be here together. Amen, and just, we're gonna worship, we're gonna sing. You can leave as you desire to leave, but I would just encourage you, don't leave until you prayed yourself. Not just somebody leading in prayer, like the, the, the brother said, but, but us ourselves saying, God, I receive what I heard tonight. I receive it, and I want it to live in me until I die out some more and this old thinking is gone and nothing but your word is living in me. So don't leave here until you've prayed yourself. Amen. God bless you. It's been good to be here. We want to remind you that the service will be 10.30 in the morning. Every visitor that will be staying with us tomorrow, remember the fellowship between services and the communion. Amen. You're all welcome to stay for all of it. Amen. May God bless you. You can be dismissed as you wish to be. Sing like. And we'll give the glory to Jesus.
human walk that day as they reach their destination to ask the third to stay as they talk together breaking Yeah.
you.